30 Grandchildren Badge Attempt, Part 8. This is Carrots here. Welcome, and I hope you enjoy this next part of the attempt to get the badge, Head of the Household. We're going to meet the various members of the household, plus this time I'm going to introduce you to Tony, Tony McLean. We see him around town occasionally. He is aware that he is the father of 15 children, although he doesn't have anything to do with their actual upbringing. He doesn't live in the household, and I don't think he's even met the mother of the children. He has met some of his children when they've been out fishing and various episodes. You see him around town. So I thought I'd introduce him to you here, just so you'd get an idea of who he is and why some of the children look the way they do. So this is Tony. His traits are virtuoso, natural cook, green thumb, angler and friendly. His occupation is kitchen scullion and he has achieved his lifetime wish of becoming the culinary librarian. Tony became the father of 15 children when I used a mod to add 15 instant babies to Jerry's household. Jerry and Tony had been placed into Cake Island which was made by Reflong 7. I put them into the world specifically to be the parents of my 15 children who to form the basis of my 30 grandchildren challenge. Tony and Jerry are old sims I made back in 2009 and haven't used much since. There are other sims of mine living in the world, potential spouses for various children when they grow up, and Tony shares a house with them. Now Tony's house is quite close to the house where Jerry is raising their 15 children. As you can see, that's Jerry's house off in the distance there. Tony's house is a lot bigger than Jerry's. Jerry's house, even though Jerry's got 16 in the household and Tony's only got about four or five, plus a dog. It's quite a nice house. Both of the houses came with the world. So if you like the houses, you'll need to get Reflong 7's world. Yolanda Mills is playing chess. It's near the Showtime Performance Park. Yolanda lives in the same house as Tony. Her traits are adventurous, brave, disciplined, green thumb, friendly. Her lifetime wish is seasoned traveller and her job is seed sower. She's gardener at level 7. Obviously I've played her before. She's got an inventory full of things including Tiberium so she's feeling nauseous at the moment. Yolanda is a potential mother for some of the grandchildren and she's practicing chess while she's being watched. Lynette who is one of the 15 children of Jerry and Tony. The blonde witch making a quick escape from the area is Ursula Gammon. I made her soon after Seasons was released. She's another potential mother for some of the grandchildren. She does not live with Tony but certainly she's an occult and we're trying for a badge I'll probably try to avoid her as a potential mother. Another member of Tony's household is Dave Webb. He is flirty, great kisser, green thumb, charismatic and friendly and I put him into the game as a potential father for one or more of the grandchildren. However I've just discovered that he has a girlfriend. Ursula, the witch we've just met, and they have a baby, Fernando. So the game's put them together. I don't know any of Ursula's traits and neither does Dave. So I think we will avoid them as potential parents for future grandchildren at this point. However, depending on how long the game has to go for, how many generations we go through before we finally get the badge, baby Fernando could turn out to be a parent of some future grandchildren for another generation. Edith Laffey lives in Tony's household too and she's still available as a potential mother for some of the grandchildren. Her traits are great kisser, bookworm, family oriented, charismatic and angler. She's a kitchen scullion and her lifetime wish has been achieved. She wants to be a culinary librarian and I found her fishing at the graveyard and it's just getting dark in the game at this point. Tracy Burns is the final member of Tony's household. Her traits are adventurous, brave, great kisser, green thumb and friendly and she wants to be a seasoned traveller. Now she's another one that was added to the game as a potential mother for one or more of the grandchildren. But it turns out she's got a boyfriend and that's Tony. So it looks like she probably won't be available as a mother for one of Tony's grandchildren. So it seems we only have Edith and Yolanda as potential 
single mothers for future grandchildren. However, there are other households in which I have placed additional sims. Some of them have matched up with others and had families due to the influence of the game. But I'm hoping we've still got a few that are available. If not, I'll just add a few more sims as required. Let's get to know the main household. Here's Jerry. She is the mother. She's a young adult, which is really odd because all of her children are now teens. But she's a young adult and her traits are good sense of humour, loves the outdoors, charismatic, green thumb, angler, and she's got an extra trait of genius. Her occupation is quality assurance manager in the video game career. She's at level three and her lifetime wish is perfect garden. Now let's have a word with the teens, all 15 of them. They're all grade A students at school, so they're all potentially ready to age up at any time. I'm working on getting them to complete the lifetime wish if that's possible to be done as a teen. Some of them are honour students and they need to wait until they get their reward for staying on the honour roll for three days. At this point they're all the same age but that will change when I start aging them up because I'll age them up each one individually when I think they're ready to be aged up. The first one we will check up on his progress is Wilfred. Wilfred's traits are family oriented, good savvy sculptor and friendly. He has to wait till he has completed his three days on the honour roll. His lifetime wish is the fairy tale finder, which means he's got to adopt a unicorn. That may never happen, so he's not going to wait for his lifetime wish to be achieved. Robbie's next. His traits are couch potato, virtuoso, bookworm and computer whiz. His lifetime wish is to become a creature robot crossbreeder. That can't be achieved until he's a young adult at least. So he'll be aging up without worrying about his lifetime wish. When he was a child he found a magic lamp at the graveyard in the mausoleum. And so he's got the lamp in his room and he's got a genie as well. Robbie can age up any time after he's got his reward for being on the honour roll for three days. Lynette, her traits are loves to swim, good, charismatic and artistic. She wants to be the zoologist. So far she's caught four of the 20 minor animals that she needs to catch to achieve her lifetime wish so she'll be busy for a while before she's able to age up. We saw her earlier when she was out watching Yolanda play chess in the park. Lynette is an honour student and she's on the honour roll but she will have completed that reward long before she has completed her lifetime wish so she won't be aging up for a while. Felicia has the traits adventurous, brave, learner and disciplined. She's on the honour roll and needs to wait till that reward has been granted to her. I think it's worth a thousand lifetime happiness points. So it's worth waiting for. She wants to become a creature robot crossbreeder. That can't be achieved until she has aged up to at least a young adult. So she won't be waiting for her lifetime wish. She'll be aging up any time after she has got her reward being on the honour roll for three days. Dolores' traits are virtuoso, excitable, savvy sculptor and artistic. She's on the honour roll but she needs to wait to complete her lifetime wish before I'll age her up. She wants to be a master of the arts and that means she's got to get to level 10 in painting and the guitar skills. She is almost up to level 7 in painting and her guitar skill is very close to level 10. She loves playing the guitar and you often see her at home just playing with most of her siblings watching. Sharonda, her traits are clumsy, eco-friendly, animal lover and friendly. She's not on the honour roll and she doesn't have a lifetime wish so there's really nothing to make her wait to age up to young adult. So we shall see what I do there. She could be one of the first to go, although she doesn't seem to have a great grip on the world, but that's just Sharonda. I should mention at this point as well, I should have said it earlier, that all of the names of all of these 15 teens were chosen by the game and I just accepted them. So most of them are names I've never heard before. Megan was the last one to age up to teen. Her traits are good sense of humour, clumsy, handy and athletic. She's a grade A student but she's not on the honour roll. She wants to be a renaissance sim which requires her to master three skills. So far she's only mastered one which is the handiness skill. 
Latoya's traits are adventurous, loves the outdoors, disciplined and family oriented. She is one of the Sims who I've got to keep at to do the homework. There's a few of them like that. Most of them just sit down and do it straight away, but there's a few who prefer to sit in the sand pit or do anything but homework. Latoya wants to be a Renaissance Sim. She needs to master three skills. But so far she's mastered none. She is an A-grade student, but she's not on the honour roll. She could age up at any time. We'll see what happens. She's family oriented, so she might age up fairly quickly because the aim of this game is for the children to have lots of their own children. Kendall's traits are family oriented, excitable, gatherer and artistic. He is an honour student and needs to wait a little while for his reward. His lifetime wish is to be a visionary, which means he needs to master painting and photography skills. I know he hasn't started on his photography skill yet, but he is working towards his painting skill. Because he's family oriented, he may get aged up before he has achieved his lifetime wish. We shall see what happens. I can't have too many of them aged up to young adult at the same time or I'm not going to be able to handle it. I'll just age them up slowly to make sure I've actually got some control and have worked out how to play the game. Joni's traits are loner, bookworm, virtuoso and artistic. She's on the honour roll and needs to wait a little while, not long, just about a day. Her lifetime wish is to be an illustrious author. She's doing reasonably well with her painting. I think she's up to about a level 7 in painting. And her writing, she's barely touched. She's on level 3, which she got from reading books as a toddler. However, she has mastered the guitar skill. She loves to play the guitar. She's always picking up a guitar. So I'm going to have to see if I can direct her towards her painting and writing more often. I think she'll be staying as a teen until she's achieved her lifetime wish. Javan's traits are adventurous, loves the outdoors, excitable and athletic. He's a grade A student but has not got on the honour roll and his lifetime wish is zoologist and he's achieved it. So he can age up straight away. We might even age him up this episode. We'll see if we've got time. Probably not. I'm thinking of giving him, giving him family oriented trait when he ages up just to make it so he wants to get married and have kids. Demetrius traits are adventurous, brave, loves the outdoors and disciplined. She's a grade A student but not on the honour roll and her lifetime wish is presenting the perfect private aquarium. She's working well towards that and she's got an inventory with quite a lot of perfect fish in it but she's still got a few more to collect. It's getting very cold outside now, it's getting towards late autumn and I've got the wishing well inside the house for them. So she's going to be concentrating on fishing, which is what she's doing in this picture. That's the fishing rod she's holding in her hand. And hopefully she'll catch enough perfect fish in the wishing well over the autumn and winter and early spring months to be able to achieve her lifetime wish. Constance's traits are adventurous, brave, loves the outdoors and a gatherer. She's on the honour roll and has a little wait to do there. She wants to be a renaissance sim and that means she needs to master three skills. But so far she's only got two skills. But she's got to level eight in fishing and her writing is at level three due to reading books as a toddler. So she's got a way to go before she achieves her lifetime wish and ages up. Kobe. His traits, clumsy, animal lover, artistic, de green thumb. He's on the honour roll and his lifetime wish is private museum. Now he had no lifetime wish for such a long time then all of a sudden he just popped that one up that he wanted a private museum. So I've never done that one before so I said yes. It requires them to do adventures and collect relics in the various world adventure worlds and in the next episode you'll see them off in France. You won't see that in this episode, but that's where the relics came from. I'll be doing, doing the next episode shortly. So obviously there's going to be a lot more travelling for them for him to get the 20,000 Somalians worth of relics that he wants to get to achieve his lifetime wish. Finally we get to Alicia and by the time I got to her she'd gone to bed so I took a picture of her sleeping. Her traits are disciplined, party animal, easily impressed and diva. She's on the honour roll and she's achieved her lifetime wish of zoologist. So she can age up as soon as she gets her reward for being on the honour roll for three days.
Let's see some action in the game. All of the teens have gone to school and Jerry's at home cleaning house. She seems to be doing a better job of it than the teens were doing when I was trying to get them to do it. Jerry does have to go to work today but she starts about four hours after the teens leave for school so she can get a bit done before she has to go. And then of course they all come home from school long before she comes home from work. She's in the video game career and I think she's on level three. So she's just going to walk around the lot now collecting all of the dirty laundry. These teens seem to be a messy bunch. There's clothes everywhere. I'm going to expand this house slightly too. I've found that there is scope to expand because I need more room for the things I want them to be able to do at home. I've got this big area down here for the garden and it's there mostly for Jerry to have her lifetime wish of perfect garden. I don't think they're ever going to get a garden as big as this so I'm thinking I'll probably get rid of a lot of those soil rugs before much longer because to get a perfect garden she doesn't need a massive garden like that. It sounds like the carpools arrived to take her to work. Robbie came home after school with everybody else but all of a sudden he got dragged to this location and I discovered there was a sim on fire and he was the proprietor. This is a showtime outdoor stage and eventually I realised after trying to get Robbie unsuccessfully to put him out I realised that that was a witch. That's Ursula and she has obviously done a fire blast and set that poor proprietor on fire. Now he's gone over there to, to the chess table. I suspect to get away from the witch so she doesn't burn him again and to actually kill him. I sent Robbie home. He's there playing for tips but I don't think that's appropriate right now. You can see the stage there. It must be the big park where they go to perform that's in the showtime career. Robbie needs to go home and do his homework. He doesn't need to get money by playing for tips and he doesn't need to get a good guitar skill. Robbie wants to be a creature robot crossbreeder so the guitar's not going to help him at all with that lifetime wish. So he must be going to go somewhere. Oh, he got celebrity status from her. She must be a celebrity. Ursula Gammon is her name. She's one of my sims that I've placed in the world. We saw her being introduced right at the beginning of the video. That's how I know she's a witch. I saw her doing that earlier. Playing with magic. I thought that'd be a dead giveaway that she's a witch. You can see the breath in the cold and she's got the clothes she's wearing and it's so cold that they've got steamy breath. This is the rest of the household at home doing their homework or talking. I've got to do the rounds and I'll just check and make sure everybody's done their homework. Felicia's here. She just got caught in a trap and then the sink broke. She's got to try to fix that. Let's just put the dirty dishes in the dishwasher and leave the sink broken. There must be a gnome somewhere leaving those links like that. You can't put them in the fridge. They just sit on the cupboards everywhere going off. She's probably got to go to school in a minute. No time to do that, but she can get started on it. Jerry's at home, just finished doing some laundry. She's going to collect the clean clothes off the line. She's doing house cleaning. This is another morning before work. She's gradually getting the house all cleaned up. It's great. She does quite a good job when I say tell her to clean the house. They've got one single solitary old gnome that I'm aware of. I think I might try aging him down, make him a toddler again. Now, that night, after school and after work, they're all trying to eat at the same little table. Not enough chairs for 16 sims. They've only got six chairs to set to share among 16 of them, I think. Maybe it's eight chairs. Jerry had an opportunity to deliver a painting to France, so that's why she's painting. Now, here's Robbie in his room with his genie lamp. He's going to rub the lamp and we'll see his genie pop out of it. And if you watched the last episode, you would have seen him with his genie. And I was very shocked and surprised to see that the genie had changed. We've now got a female, thin female genie. We don't have very much simoleons. We need simoleons desperately if we're going to go to France. So we're going to ask the genie, we're going to wish for wealth. And that should give us enough simoleons to go to France and do some additions to the house. Otherwise this game is going to be very boring for you to watch while they gradually and slowly build up enough money to be able to do anything at all. So they've been chatting for quite a while, got introduced to each other. They're getting quite friendly, Robbie and his genie. 
I think he might get her to wish for wealth a couple of times and then make the genie real. So he's got to become friends with her. Oh, look at that. He just got 100,000 simoleons from his genie. Now they'll be able to go to France and they will be able to do some work around the house. But it's time for school. As usual, in the morning, here is Jerry trying to get some housework done before she has to go to work. And the washing machine is sort of broken a bit. And she's going to have to repair it before she goes to work. That means she won't get as much housework done. Get the clean washing out of it first. Worried a bit about the if it's been rinsed enough and all that soap suds coming out but she's put it in the dryer. I guess it'll be clean enough for them. Now she can work on repairing the washing machine. This is going to take a while but we'll cut most of that out or almost all of it out actually. It's a bit worrying as the water piles up around her that she may get electrocuted but the pool of water never actually goes over the squares that she is sitting on or squatting on. It's only if they're feet are in the water that they get electrocuted. See that water coming around behind her? But she was safe. It didn't actually go onto the squares that she is occupying. Car's out there waiting for her. She's got to go to work. She can't miss a day's work. I've never seen a sim get to the top of this career so I'd like to see Jerry do it. It's the video game career. Oh good, she's fixed the washing machine so she can rush, rush off to work without losing any progress on repairing the machine. She might have improved her handiness skill a bit too by the look of it. There's the car taking her to work. The carpool. There is Tony's house. It's that old gnome sitting in the middle of the garden. I've got testing cheats turned on. So I should have no difficulty aging him back down to toddler. It's just a shift click and then choose age and toddler. So with testing cheats turned on, shift click, age and toddler and there he is. He's no longer ready to die of old age, he's a toddler again. Not all gnomes can do that, only the ones that age. And now they've all come home from school and, we've, and work and we've set off to France. You'll see the visit to France in the next episode. So thank you for watching, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed, like if you liked the video and I will see you in the next episode. Bye bye for now and happy simming.